It's the 8th of January 1985, 10 o'clock at night. HMS Trafalgar has just fought what might be generously referred to as the Second Battle of the Denmark Strait, although in reality it was more of an assassination than a battle. A historic stretch of ocean, the Denmark Strait is the location at which during the Second World War, HMS Hood and HMS Prince of Wales fought the German battleship Bismarck and the cruiser Prince Eugen. Just like the Soviet Charlie-class submarine, those two ships were seeking to break out into the North Atlantic to attack Allied convoys. On this occasion, however, unlike the ill-fated HMS Hood, Trafalgar has prevailed over its foe, and an entire Soviet crew now rests upon the bottom, alongside the remains of a previous generation of sailors from a very different war. Ghosts of that war do still persist, however, on both sides. For the Americans' part, a small number of Iowa-class battleships remain in service after being reactivated and partially modernised by order of the Reagan administration. Likewise, on the Soviet side, a number of Sverdlov-class cruisers remain in service, left over from Stalin's time. Armed with conventional six-inch guns, the Sverdlovs were part of Stalin's programme to create a blue-water navy in the years immediately following World War II. For a very brief moment in time, these vessels did represent a noticeable threat to the Royal Navy whose aircraft carrier coverage was limited and whose cruisers lacked the armour and armament possessed by the Sverdlovs. By the time Khrushchev was in power, however, these vessels with their big guns were deemed entirely obsolete in the missile age and as the Soviet Navy refocused its efforts on submarine warfare instead, most of the Sverdlovs still in production were scrapped, and only a few were kept around to serve in very limited and specific support roles. As Trafalgar receives new orders to intercept another wolf pack of Soviet diesel submarines, British intelligence is watching one of these Sverdlovs very closely, as it, along with a small task force of tankers, LSTs and escort vessels, makes preparations to set sail from Murmansk. It is speculated that they intend to make another amphibious assault on the Norwegian coast after the previous Soviet success at Andoya, a theory that is supported by the presence of the aforementioned Sverdlov because one of the few useful roles it still serves is providing offshore artillery support to amphibious troops. Quite unbeknownst to Captain Cook and his crew, contingency plans are drawn up to deal with this potential new assault, and after the embarrassment at Andoya, NATO admirals are determined not to let such an event come to pass a second time. By the time HMS Trafalgar comes up to communications depth again, her new orders will be very important ones. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Cold Waters, where previously, uh, things did not go totally according to plan. Um, <clears throat> we uh, seem to lose two, two bits of the Sosa's net in almost as many days, which uh, was not great. We were just thoroughly outmaneuvered. The, the Reds caught us at just the right time when we needed to reload and resupply and were therefore pretty much completely un incapable of uh, meeting the demands of, of the missions that we were you know sent on um the good news is now though that we had did manage to intercept and sink a, a charlie class submarine in the denmark strait and now we're going to go try and find and sink some diesel electric submarines off the coast of norway um so we'll try and we'll try and push back here. We'll try and try and uh, try and make sure the tide doesn't permanently turn against us, you know. But um, <clears throat> oh gosh, satellites incoming! Uh, yeah, we'll try and uh, make sure this isn't the beginning of a slippery slope, eh? All right, here we are, Blue Forty Nine. Let's hang out here and listen. Now, of course, as I said. It's going to be devilishly difficult to actually detect Soviet submarines now versus the way it was before because, uh, unfortunately, is this, is this our guy here? He's getting awfully close to Trondheim in that, isn't he? He's sort of going up that way. We're told Blue 4 9, that's where I'm going to stay. Um,. Hmm. Maybe it's you, though. Maybe it's this guy. He looks like he's heading towards the North Sea, though. But he, you know what? He's in our zone. So we must engage. Our speed is 10 knots. There's a very strong surface duct and a very strong thermal layer here. Interesting. That's close to... 15 kilometers? 
Exostatus report. Right, we're ready to... We're, we're loaded for bear. We're, we're good to go. Alright, get that array out. Conditions, we're just under the light layer at the moment, it looks Con, like. Sonar, new contact bearing, two, one, six, designated Sierra, one. Let's see if we can figure out what you are, Sierra, one. Well, you, you do look a bit like a submarine right off the bat, don't you? A kilo? Could... My god, I think it is a kilo. I'm craning over right now to look at the bottom corner of my monitor to make sure that these lines are in the right place, and I actually think it's a tango. It was easy to make not notice the difference there, but if I really put my nose up against the monitor here... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a tango. Hello, sir. Submerged submarine. It can't possibly be anything else. Mind you, I'm not sure. I think there's one diesel sub that, like, has an uncannily similar profile to a, to a particular merchant ship. Oh, and then there's the... Yes, yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Look. Um... <laughs> its profile is also almost identical to the Yankee SSBN uh, which is a very different kind of submarine I don't know what a Yankee would be doing off the coast of uh, off the coast of Norway <laughs> so I don't think that's it in fact I, th I think one of the lines is just, just by, by a hair's width not in quite the right place but yeah just want to make sure I haven't accidentally picked up a trawler here or something. No, it's got to be a tango. It's got to be a tango. You know when you've been tangoed, you see. Still building a solution. Which way is he going at the moment? Oh, but is our best guess. Kind of looks like he's going this way. For some reason, the toad array was not deployed. Let's fix that. Time compression! Oh, it's a sub, all right. We can hear it down below. He's, he's going quite far down, actually. Good news is there's plenty of depth to work with, even though we're quite close to Norway. Let's, uh, let's head on down there after him, shall we? Make that 183, shall we? 168, there we go. Oh, is he going this way? Okay. Well, that's perfect. Aha. I didn't think he'd be alone. And what are you? Ooh. Okay, it's time to get my nose up against the monitor again. <laughs> oh dear. What are you then? Are you a kilo or are you a tango? I think it's another tango. Sorry folks, is there any like background thumping and weird noises and that? It's my it's my headphone cable getting caught on my trousers just then as I leaned over. Uh, you probably, if you if you if you're watching on a phone or on a, on a with on a computer with speakers, you probably wouldn't have heard most of that. Most of those little noises you don't, but it's it's the headphone listeners. They can attest to it. I think they can hear the the occasional bass wobble when uh, one of my cables bumps up against something. Come left to two, four, five. Helm I. Oh, Come hello. Course. What are you guys up to? You're going this way, he's going that way. Are you both now turning this way? Devil's going on. Come left to one seven seven helm I. Con, helm, you will notice the distinct course. lack of kilo. And that could be because we've sunk a lot of the kilos. It could also be because there's one there and we just can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the devilish thing with him. You can't tell, can you? 
We'll keep stalking these tangos and uh, see if we hear one. Come right to one Interesting eight, formation zero, they took up there. I mean, that is a bit weird. Get a look at the old tango. It's an ugly freaking submarine, this one. It's an ugly, ugly sub. It has the SSK designation, which is a bit of an archaic one, I think. It's, it's, uh, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, like Hunter Killer Submarine or something like that. It's, it's a, it's a designation that I, I think, I mean, my memory's a little fuzzy actually, but I believe the designation is specifically for diesel electric submarines that are designed as attack submarines that hunt, you know, other submarines. I think that's for the SSK designation actually is it's a large diesel electric attack submarines designed for both long range operations and defending the arctic SSBN bastions they are comparable to the Victor 2 class nuclear attack submarines in terms of sensors and weapons but are significantly quieter when running on batteries this makes them suitable for Spetsnaz operations in addition to operating against NATO shipping which is what they've apparently been doing in this region Um, yes, they are. They're really, they're pretty darn quiet at 120 decibels. They've got anechoic coating. You set 80 torpedoes, which are certainly no joke whatsoever. I'd, I'd give my eye teeth for some you set 80 torpedoes instead of my stupid tigerfish, I tell you. Get some work done with those things. And test 71s as well, actually. Uh, which aren't as good. By far. I mean, look at that 48 knots on these UTL-80s. They are quick torpedoes, those things. And their max depth is like a 1,000 meters as well, so... If we get one of those on us, I... Um, I will struggle to shake it off. That's for sure. Which is why I'm hoping that never becomes the case. I didn't want to even say this because because speaking this into existence almost invites um, disaster. But so far in this campaign, we have never, I don't think, been acquired by an enemy heavyweight torpedo. It hasn't happened. I haven't had to actually do any serious torpedo dodging yet. Come left to... One, yeah, there's doing eight three, knots. No, eight, yeah, both going eight knots. Okay. Presumably no, a good no, speed no, for using the old batteries underwater and, and not draining them too fast. Theoretically, if I made use of the very strong layer, we could uh, get quite close to these guys. We'd be, we'd be noticeably above them, though. Oh, interesting. Okay, what are they, what are they doing now? Are they Come right to one, turning eight, right two, and they're going to sort of I, line up parallel to each other and head this way now? So what's the plan here, lads? Well, we're in Sierra 1's baffles and Sierra 2's, but unfortunately I don't really know where Sierra 2's going at this point, so I don't want to launch just yet. I get these guys it really really establish what their what their new course is going to be before I start blasting, you know. Then again. <sighs> it's tricky because uh I'd really like to catch these guys unawares, because otherwise, you know, they start slamming you said 80s towards us. That's not going to be fun. That's really not going to be fun. They are getting further and further away from us at this point. Also. Well within max range, I think, of our, our tigerfish, but still, they are creeping away.
I might go for it, you know. Yep, gonna do it. Gone fire Buy one. Control. We've lost the wire. Fire two. Okay. Aye, this is this guy here. I'm a little bit, a bit less certain about. I'm glad the wire stayed on him. All right. Time compression. Here we go. Both of them passive homers. Because we seem to be having a lot more success with them against these anechoically coated subs. But especially when you're going at them, you know, attacking from dead astern. It means they won't be alerted by the pinging. Oh goodness me, my phone's going off. One moment, folks. At that very moment, one of the one of the sonar men in the in the tango sonar room turns around and says, "Tomorrow, commander, I think I can hear a phone ringing." <laughs> oh dear. Time compression back on. Gosh, look, okay, so far so good. Please let this be as easy as it seems. Let's keep creeping along, no need to go active just yet. I'll give you all a little bit of torpedo cam for this one. I've lost the other one, but... Uh, I'll give you a bit of that sweet, sweet torpedo cam action you've all been craving in the comments. We're at the right depth, aren't we? He's actually a little bit lower. They both are. Oh god, there he goes. Don't go on time compression, goodness me. I have a bad habit of accidentally enabling time compression. Down you go, sir. Uh, oh god, how do I get the UI back? There we go. Right, you. Weapon. Con, fire control. Weapon acquired. He acquired him immediately. Beautiful. There you go, folks. Enjoy the explosion. You just put it on time compression here until the submarine starts to appear through the gloom. There it is. Has no idea what's coming. Or does he? He did just suddenly start diving. Marconi's finest right here, which is unfortunately not saying a lot, but... Okay, maybe that was just a routine depth change because he's, he's shallowed out pretty quick. Here we go. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra, two. Last bearing, two. Zero, five. Contact breaking up. Well, that, as they say, is that. Green light down here. I think we're ready to leave. No kilos that we were aware of, anyway. No, it turns out there weren't any. This time, there actually weren't any. Two tangos, and we sunk them both. Were they the correct tangos, though? That is the question. Congratulations on a job well done, Commander. We need to protect those merchants at all costs. New orders to be issued shortly on this down. Like, hurrah! Ah, that's a photograph of a submarine that is very much not ours. Red subs overestimated. Submarine attacks on merchant convoys transiting the Norwegian Sea have decreased in recent days. An Alliance press spokesman provided little additional information, but did state that we will make the most of our current good luck and continue to bring the fight to enemy sub forces. 
Although Allied forces have started receiving more supplies, military leaders were careful to temper expectations. Even with more equipment available, the best we can probably do at this point is to hold our current position, stated one general. That's always good to hear, isn't it? If they're telling the public that, imagine how bad it is behind the scenes. <laughs> um, right, so next orders. Recent recon overflights show a large force of enemy la oh, oh. landing ships, huh? Surface combatants preparing to sail within three days. NavOps believe they will attempt to conduct an amphibious landing at Trondheim, Norway. No other units are available, and NavOps is depending on you to intercept and destroy or disrupt this force before the landing occurs. Okay, so a bit of deja vu here. They're not satisfied with Andoya. They're on their way to Trondheim next. Uh, crumbs. All right. This time it really is up to us. All right, let's see. Status report for now. I'll reload a couple more tigerfish in there in case we get intercepted by something along the way. But when we actually get there, I'm going to have to make the executive decision on whether or not I want to actually try and engage in, uh, with an, a harpoon attack or uh, just use torpedoes. Yeah, don't know. Don't know. Continue on course. Pause. Um, okay. One moment, folks, while I, I check exactly how long we've been recording for okay this would be an extremely short episode were it to be one episode so you lucky ducks we're going to be attacking this surface group today it looks like um right let's review the orders once again they're preparing to sail within three days but and they're going to land at tron time so there's going to be possibly quite a bit of waiting for us on this occasion I'm trying to sort of figure out how you get to Tron time on the campaign map you sort of have to go in like that don't you so we're going to want to wait here I don't want to engage them in shallow water if possible I mean it's going to be a bit shallow because you can see the shelf here but um, I don't want to be super shallow oh god this might be it here Although I don't know, actually. You know, I think if it was, it would have the little uh, transport ship logo. So we might have just bumbled into a nasty surface group that's completely unrelated. Unfortunately. Um, okay. I will stick with the torpedoes for now. And I won't close. We'll just... Observe... Put the toad array out. For future reference, because that's Trondheim down there, I think. What is the depth here? Floors at only 213 meters. That is worrying. All right, let's see if we can identify these. What do we got? That is a Krivak. This is a con sonar new con con helm steady course. Potentially going to be plenty of civilian traffic around here as well, just to muddy the waters. They might be. They might have a submarine with them. Actually, these guys. What the hell are you? A golf? No, no that's not a golf. First two lines are a bit too off. You are actually a trawler. <laughs> Yeah, it was the golf I was thinking of. The golf is the one that looks really similar to a trawler. Oh, we've already got active pinging going on. Delightful. Sverdlov? Con sonar Sierra 7 is classified as capital ship. My god, yeah, capital ship. Flipping out. Amgwema? Yeah, I reckon so. We've got three. If there's no transport ships here, I'm not bloody interested, i got to be honest. Target of opportunity, though it may be, it's also an opportunity for us to get ourselves sunk. Hmm. 
the hell is this thing? Uh, looks like a Rapucha. Okay, I think this is actually our guys because the Rapucha is an LST, yep. What else have we got? Alligator? Yeah. And then Sierra 2 at the back there, which is probably another escort, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's another, it's a cash in. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is oh Christ, as... okay, so, uh, that's what we're dealing with. We have a Krivak, an Amgwema, an Alligator, Sverdlov, a Rapucha, and at the back another cash in. So the Krivaks and the cash is your escorts, obviously this is a frigate. Um, Rastra B missiles. Con sonar, new Maxed at 500 meters. Anti-submarine warfare three. missile, basically. It drops a torpedo like the Vodapads do. Cash in. He has RBU-6000s, which are effectively like hedgehog launchers from World War II. They, they fire depth charges up to 6,000 meters. Um, so six kilometers, essentially. He has a range with those things out to there here. And those, I, I really hate these things because they are such a roll of the dice in terms of whether or not they get you. Amguema AP, passenger cargo ship. It's the alligator and the rapucha that we mostly care about. They've also got a Sverdlov here, which is some ancient World War II thing in it. The last big gun warships built after World War II during the 1950s, yeah. Obsolete with the advent of anti-ship missiles and jet aircraft, the Soviets still consider them useful for providing artillery support during amphibious operations, which is why it's here. Um, it would be nice to get this thing. Um, but not really a requirement. Several of the class have been upgraded to service flagships and service strike groups. Their large size providing for extensive radar equipment as well as command and control facilities. As you can see, they've got basically nothing. They've got anti-missile defense and some un massive 152mm guns. But that's it. We don't have to worry about the... Am the uh, not the Amgrama, sorry. The Sverdlov. Uh, it's not a threat to us. Uh, the Kashin is, though. It's only got 660, set 65 torpedoes, um, so it's the Krivac I'm more worried about, really. Cashin, eh, Krivac, ugh. And we've got another one actually here as well that's not identified. Let's figure out what you are hidden in amongst the mess. Another alligator? Maybe? I'm not totally sure, actually. I'm not 100% convinced. Con sonar, Sierra 8 is classified as oh, it, okay. It is an alligator. Alright then. Good look at you guys on the surface. So, there's the Anguema. There is the mighty Sverdlov in the distance. Oh, it's just dropped off. That's a shame. I wanted to have a look at it. There's the alligator. One of them. Other one's over there. Krivak. Maximum 34 knots. These guys are tricky because they can... They can outrun our tigerfish torpedoes. Well, I'm not sure if the Krivak can, but the Kashin certainly can, I think. 36 knots. They're banging away on active, not taking any chances, these guys. I'm amazed that we can't hear the Sverdlov properly right now. <laughs> He's probably the noisiest bugger here. 194 four decibels. He's not exactly quiet. Uh, there's the Rapucha. This is an amphibious assault ship, isn't it? Roll on, roll off operations with bow and stern ramps. Vehicles and whatnot. Also has onboard guns and artillery and stuff. AK 725 guns, specifically. Right, we could be attacking under more ideal circumstances, really. I mean. It's bloody shallow here, you know. It's bloody shallow, and they're headed right towards us, these guys. Come right to. Okay. Two. 
I think we really need to about face it. Anyway, it's the uh, he's, he's these three chaps at the back here, the back of the formation. Those are the ones we care about. The Krivak and the Kashin, I don't really give a crap about. They are the only escorts, though, is the thing. So if we were to deal with them, that would allow us to then engage all these other guys at our leisure with the harpoons, because uh, it doesn't look like these guys have any... The, these three certainly don't have any anti-missile defense. Um, the Sverdlov does. It does have anti-missile defense. The Amgwemmer obviously doesn't. The Krivax do. So, honestly, I think my plan is going to be to try and get rid of these escorts with torpedoes. Probably use passive so uh, sonar homing for these guys. They are very noisy. That means they'll be less likely to hear it coming. Oh, it's been ages since I've attacked a surface group in this game. Oh boy, I'm 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 racking my brain right now trying to think how the best way to go about this actually is. Uh, we've been hunting submarines for so long. I'm. Uh, yeah. Getting into their baffles would be nice. If we got into their baffles, we could just pick off these three before they even know what's happening. But likewise, if we just kill the uh, if we just kill the escorts, we can take them apart. However, we please as well. What's the speed on these things? Sixteen knots. Sixteen course. knots. Seventeen knots. Right. So they're not going to get away from us very fast. Third love could outrun us. But um, the Amgwema um, and the, the, the landing ships definitely could not. I'd like to get the Sverdlov just to say we did it, really. It's not every now... It's not every day you you, f you find a big World War II-style cruiser out and about. You know? It would make for a fine trophy. But it really isn't a priority. I mean, it's, it's big guns are not going to be very helpful if they don't have any troops to land in the first place. So. Good looking ship, though. I'll give it that. There's old Trafalgar. Pootling along quietly. Let's have a look at the sensor comparison. Uh, ooh, the Krivak has a towed array, does it? Well... That certainly changes things. Obviously, surface ships can't hear you nearly as well as uh, submarines can. Like minus 45 right now. They wouldn't hear me right now if I did fire a torpedo at them. The toad is at dead zero right now. His speed is 24 knots. I don't even know if he's got the toad array deployed. Oh, maybe he does. Minus one. A bit godlike knowledge that knowing whether or not he's got got the toad array deployed based on the number here, but I guess operating on the assumption that he is using the toad array, it's at minus one, which means he can almost hear us, which is a bit scary. From all the way over there. Are they changing direction now? What are they doing? Let's put on a bit of time compression. Okay, the stats on the arrays here are going all kinds of weird. Make depth one zero zero dive by. Let's go down towards the seafloor. ourselves a bit of depth. You notice I haven't even bothered to make use of the periscope. I, I'm fairly sure in real life they would. 
because their situational awareness in real life would not be nearly as good as what we have here. Uh, are we just slightly too deep for the toad array? That's annoying. There we go. Uh, unfortunately, I seem to be maneuvering right into their path, uh, which is not very helpful. Should have kept going this way, apparently. I assume they were headed down this way towards Trondheim, so... Mr. Krivak. Oh, again? I should probably keep an eye on this, huh? Because the, uh, the the floor is not going to stay at the same depth, is it? Though it does seem to actually be getting deeper as we head this way. Yeah, it kind of looks like on the map there's like a shallower patch of water here. Minus five on the toad. Everything about this sucks. Uh, we're really not in a good position here, and it's uh, they uncannily seem to keep turning back towards the area I decide to go in. They have there's no way they know I'm here. It's just I'm getting some really poor luck, unfortunately. They just keep zigging and zagging in the wrong way that I want them to. <sighs> Crumbs. It is reaching that point where I'm going to have to maybe consider shooting. Come left to zero seven seven. Hell well, let's make sure these things are set for the uh, for set for surface vessels. for his toad array, I could quite, I could quite handily um, evade them for much longer. But that toad array is really causing issues. In fact, his active sonar is, is really creeping up there. Oh Jesus! Uh, they're also zigzagging quite erratically as well. We're not in a good position to fire. We're really not. Con helm, steady course. They're going quite fast too. I think we're going to have to fire these things and then probably go extremely evasive. Of the two here, the Krivak is the absolute top priority in terms of needs to die. Oh boy, All right, let's do this. Con fire control, we've lost the wire. To nobody's surprise, we have lost the wire. Gonna send one Shoot this two. way as well. Aye, sir. See how we get on with just those. Come right to I wanna turn one, this way. Nine. Slow the rate at which they're going to coming towards us. Honestly, actually, Con Helm, steady course. Thinking I should send both of them after the Krivak. Turning. What on earth is he doing? Have they heard the torpedoes? They haven't heard me yet, I don't think. Ooh. They might have heard the torps, though.
I think it's quiet. One of them has. Oh, it certainly has. Problem is, will it get him? Probably not. Pop and noisemakers. I do wonder. I, I thought they would have heard the launch on his toad array. But maybe I was in the toad array's dead zone when it happened. You know how the toad array can't hear anything that's in front of the ship? So that's a, that's a fact that I momentarily forgot there. Okay, number two's gone active. Or it's about to. There it goes. Yeah, no, killing the Krivak is top priority. I'm happy to send two poor torpedoes after it. You can see the uh, the transports are already going evasive. They are probably going to start fleeing in this direction or something. I don't know what the Sverdlov's going to do. We can't really hear it very well at the moment anyway. Yeah, this thing is haplessly going for the noisemakers. I'm really glad we kept a wire here, if I'm honest. Really glad. Problem is, he might just try and outrun the torpedo. If he's smart, what he'll do right now is he'll turn this way and just go and book it. I think I'm going to need to manually turn the torpedo this way to try and intercept. So I'm aiming for the intercept dot there. Come left to one, four, eight, helm, I. Probably keep an eye on the sensor comparison. Oh yeah, the cash is blind as a bat. No need to worry about him. Deaf as a stone, I suppose, really would be a more appropriate turn of phrase. We got our, our toad array out. What's the seafloor looking like? Yeah, it's getting deeper. Good. Old Tiggy Fish there is uh, doing his best, but the Krivak is doing 32 knots. He just zigzag. He did. Yeah, turn it back this way. This one's trying to go after him after getting totally distracted by the noisemakers, but. No, no, no. Don't don't go directly for him. What's the time to run? Like 11 minutes? Okay. Risk of time compression here. Oh, 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 Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wish you could override the homing mechanism to some extent. Make life a lot easier. Popping noisemakers, right? He knows he's in, he's, he knows he's in trouble. Catching surface vessels with tiger fish is extremely tricky because most of them are about as fast as the torpedo is, if not faster. So you need them to sort of start doing zigzags and weird maneuvers so that you can close the distance. And you have to be kind of ruthlessly effective with your piloting of the torpedo in terms of cutting the corners and stuff and avoiding the noisemakers. You see, this one here is just doing all sorts of nonsense. Lucky for us, I think the Krivak is just a smidge too slow. Then again, he might avoid this. You just watch him. See how we're I think we're it's closing with him, but it's very slow. And if I I suspect if we get a hit he might not go down. 
I'll be dead in the water almost, but... There we go. You'll notice we did not get a... Oh, we did get a contact breaking up. Okay, we just didn't hear it. Okay, it did get him. All right, I'm amazed, actually. Sometimes it takes two or more to take down a surface ship. All right, now there's the cash in. That is... Still... <laughs> still a little bit clueless, really. Uh... <laughs> Poor stupid bastard. He is a bit faster than the Krivak was, though. The Kashin actually would, if he can hear the torpedo coming, he would stand a better chance of uh, getting away from it. And there's the fire in the distance. Down she goes. Well, these guys know what's up, obviously. The Sverdlov looks like it's turned around and is booking it out there as well. They're yeah, remarkably cowardly, actually, some of the Soviet ships in this game. <laughs> Even the Sverdlov was... Obviously, the Sverdlov is no no help against submarines anyway, so it might as well just get out of there, but uh, you'd think it might at least try and do something. Fortunately for us, this convoy was very lightly escorted. Perhaps, you might say... They became a little bit bold as brass after uh, that landing at Andoya that was completely unopposed. So they sort of thought to themselves, I right, we probably don't need to send much of an escort this time. Wrong! Completely wrong! The question now is, do I want to bother with the cash-in or shall I just leave him behind? It's the creaking as it hits the bottom. We're almost in uh, depth charge range of this thing right now. Come right to zero nine four helm I could probably take him out with a couple of missiles actually, if I'm honest. I don't even know if he has any close in missile defense. He has AK seven twenty six guns, but I think those are his main armament. I don't think he's got anything to defend against that with. Give me a couple harpoons. I was kind of saving these for these guys, but... Uh, and maybe I still should. But to be honest, we could catch up with them and, and torpedo them relatively easily, I think. Because they're pretty slow. This chap, on the other hand, I might be able to pop him with just one harpoon if the stats here are accurate. I like to get out out of his out of range of his RBU six thousand though before I do it. <laughs> this is looking a bit hairy. Back to silent running, please. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Oh, he's turning this way. Maybe I'll just fire a torpedo right at, right at his nose and see what happens. Minus 29 passive, I think we can fire and he wouldn't even know it. Gun, fire control. We've lost there it goes. Fire. I don't have a lot of faith in this uh, unguided tigerfish here, I must admit. We'll see how it does, though. Con, torpedo room, tube three ready. Should go active in a second, I hope. Alright, little tigerfish, do your thing. Do your thing. Alright, it's acquired him, I think. Yes, indeed. He's gonna know it's there in a second. Con sonar, 
noisemaker. Oh yeah, there you go. He's speeding up. He's popping noisemakers. Unfortunately, the idiot torpedo is going after the noisemaker. Or... Is it? What is it doing? What are you doing, torpedo? Okay, it's correcting. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Alright, did a drive around. Oh god. Oh no. Dude. It's gonna take forever, isn't it? Bring us up to missile depth. <laughs> We're gonna be here all day otherwise. Oh god, look at it, just veer off in the completely the wrong direction. Not very good for attacking service ships, this thing. Alright, let's do this. So there's a couple of things to note here. Uh, one is we might actually be within minimum range. In fact, we are. Right now, which is not good. Lucky for us, I don't think the bloody thing can hear us at the moment. We need to get out of minimum range. I don't think we need to worry about the tiger fish. It's set to surface attack mode right now, so... You need to move. Um, and as we do that, I shall talk about this. So, uh, you can't change this setter, this setting here. Uh, and this here is basically the weapon search cone. You can set it to narrow, or you can set it to wide angle. And this here basically is the... Uh, it says weapon depth, but basically this is what, what the, 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 the missile's behavior. It's either going to fly along horizontally a lot above the surface of the ocean, like that. Or if you select this downwards arrow, what it will do is it will do a pop-up attack. It will fly along, and then when it gets within range, it will actually shoot up into the air and then come back down from an angle. And essentially, really, what you're meant to do... I mean, the reason it does it is, is, is an, an attempt to try and avoid enemy close-in weapon systems that might try to shoot it down. But the best way to make use of it, really, is to fire a pair of harpoons. One of them with the pop-up attack, and one of them just doing the regular along the, along the surface thing so that uh, it gives the enemy two directions they need to shoot in. This guy, though, apparently, according to what I'm seeing here, he doesn't have any missile defenses, so it shouldn't matter. So I will probably just go for the, uh, the flat attack on this guy when the opportunity arises. Sonar, of course, you never know. The, the little tiger fish might finally find its mark, but I somehow doubt it. It's giving him something to think about there in the meantime, that's the main thing. It's still well within minimum range, unfortunately. We need to keep creeping away this, this direction. So we got our towed array out. We have. Good. <laughs> I don't know how much time to run the, the, the tiger fish has left on it, but it's uh, <laughs> it's amusing me, if nothing else, with its antics. Alright, how are we looking now? Ooh, very close. That's a bit too... I'd like to give it a bit more wiggle room than that, otherwise the missile might just fly straight past it. Come left to three, four, one, helm I. And don't worry, I will give you missile cam, folks. I know you're going to want to see that. So, okay, uh, that's looking good to me. Okay, so wide angle, and. Uh, yeah, just the regular surface skimming along thing. Let's see what happens. Shoot one, I heard. Go, little harpoon. See if you were worth the money we paid the Americans for you. Look, uh, they, 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 that has pretty much just given away our position to them, and they are launching torpedoes. Um, which is something I do need to worry about. 
He does only have 665 torpedoes, of course, but the water is a little shallow here, so... Oh, damn it, I missed it. I'm sorry, everybody. I was thinking about how to evade that torpedo. Anyway, the missile got him. There is a torpedo in the water. More, really more than one, actually. Let's, um... Come right to Con sonar. We are cavitating. Retract the toad array. Before we damage it. Might be too late, though. Okay, good. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra, three. Book it! Bearing. Come right this way. Let's Zero. go. Yes, Colt's dead. The rest are our playthings. Let's reload those uh, harpoons. And let's go. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. Con, maneuvering, making turns for three, two, knot. Come right to zero, five. Of course, we're going to have to reacquire these guys. Gonna put some little map markers down for him. Trouble going fast like this is we're gonna lose contact with the enemy. But uh, I'd like to A, catch up and B, uh, get out of the way of that, that torpedo that they sent in this direction. Because that is the big, humongous, colossal, elephant sized downside of, of using a harpoon missile attack. Oh, God, I heard the ping then and nearly shat myself. Um. Yeah, the, the massive downside to them, obviously, is that as soon as you launch a missile attack, everybody within 50 kilometers knows exactly where you are. <laughs> so... I would not have done it unless I'd already killed the Krivak first. Let's go silent running. Uh... Let's reload the rest of the harpoons. Hello, boys. Well, we know that distance can't be quite accurate, but let's build the solution, shall we? I believe we're still at missile depth, aren't we? This time I will be able to show you missile cam properly. Hello, chaps. There you all are. Like ducks in a row. Okay, let's do this. There's one for each of you, really. Although, it's quite hard to fire one at the Sverdlov. Although, it, it, it does actually have anti-missile defense, so... Um, one might not be enough, actually. But, um... And realistically, actually, I should probably send the missiles at him. Because otherwise, he's the only one I can't catch up to in Torpedo. Yeah. Yeah, these guys I can catch up to. It might take a while, but I can definitely do it. It's a range on these things. Oh, it's humongous, isn't it? Uh, okay, well. I'll give him two. We'll give him, I'll give him two and see what he's made of. First one, actually, we'll have it do a pop-up attack. Shoot two one, I sir. Second one, regular. Shoot two two, I sir. There they go. It always, even if we don't get him, it, the, the, the close-in weapon systems going after the missiles always look spectacular. So <laughs> this should be entertaining, no matter what happens. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he shoots both of these down, to be honest with you. That big old Sverdlov, they probably covered it completely. And, um, you know, it's ab probably absolutely bristling with anti-missile defenses. But who knows? An expert would. I'm not an expert. So we're going to find out the hard way. Uh, this is the second missile we're following right now. The other one should be out in front of it somewhere. Uh, 
You'll notice that there's no thrust exhaust coming out the back. And it's a common misperception about missiles, actually, is that in popular media is that they, they have fire coming out the back of them all the time. They actually don't. What a missile does, whether it's an air-to-air -air missile, anti-ship missile, whatever, is it fires. That exhaust, rocket exhaust will fire off. It'll accelerate to supersonic speed. And then it will cut out. And it will effectively just glide the rest of the way. But it's going so fast and the missile is so aerodynamic that it won't slow down for a very long time. But um, this missile right now, the longer it goes on, it's actually, it is slowing down the entire time it's flying towards the target here. Which is why with, uh, when it comes to like air-to-air -air aerial dogfights involving missiles, a lot of emphasis is placed on trying to burn out the missile's energy by, you know, trying to evade it and get it to sort of run out of speed as it maneuvers, because they lose a lot of speed when they actually change direction and maneuver around. They're great in a straight line, but not when they start turning. It's taking its sweet time getting there, though, isn't it? Bloody hell. You did fire it in the correct direction, chaps. You didn't get the compass turned upside down, did you? Is that the third love I can see in the gloom in the distance there? Or is that just a mirage? Our info on it, its location seems to be accurate. This is just taking a bit longer than I thought it would. They all got a pack of cards. Um, fancy playing a bit of Ludo? Anything? No? Okay. Um, oh! Ah, it shot both of them down. Yeah, there you go. Gosh, we waited all that time and it didn't even get close. Yeah, well. That's pretty much what I figured would happen. All right, yeah, it shot it shot the missiles down, which is all right. The Sverdlov will probably get away from us today. I'm afraid. Come right How have we managed to for ultra quiet. lose these other guys so completely? Come right to zero eight four helm I. Heck, folks! Helm, Ooh, they changed direction. What are they doing? Might as well reload these, I suppose. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. Have they changed to Are they coming back this way? Con, torpedo room, tube two ready. I'd be kind of surprised if that were the case. Well, it looks like they have, though. Are they still trying to get to Trondheim in spite of everything? Bloody hell. Lunatics. Yeah, they are. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, seven, last bearing, zero, zero, six. Contact faded. All right, well... We've got two harpoons left. Go for the two alligators at the back, I suppose. Oh, who's fastest? <laughs> oh, it hardly matters. All right, cool. Shoot two, three. Line one. And the next. Hi, sir. There they go. See what I mean? Yeah. Quite accurately modelled that. Exhaust fires off, then the bit that held the fuel pops off the back there, and, uh, and then it just glides on the rest of the way. That is how missiles work, ladies and gentlemen. So next time you're watching a Hollywood movie and the missile is flying all the way to the target with flames coming out the back, you'll know that that's bollocks. Make the most of missile cam while it's here, folks. It doesn't come up very often. <laughs> I 
I'm a bit disappointed with those two harpoons we fired at the Sverdlo, actually. I was I was hoping for maybe something a bit better there. Um, but I think what I suspected was correct, and that if you really want to have results with missiles, you need to fire, like, 20 of them. Not two. I was hoping maybe the harpoon, because it's, you know, western-made with slightly better tech. And it's, you know, smaller and more agile or whatever. Um, or possibly a more difficult target. I thought maybe that it might stand a better chance of, uh, of getting a hit, but... Nah, I think shot both of them down quite... I mean, possibly what I should have done is placed that a little bit to the left and right to try and keep the Sverdlov in the target cone, but also, you know, spread them out. That might have been a good idea. But um, I suspect it would have got both of them anyway. There we go. Oh, there goes one of them. Boosh. Both the alligators going to the bottom. Delightful. Reload a couple of more tiger fish. Come left to zero six six helm I Let's see what these guys do. They're gonna keep going this way like loonies. Come right or are they gonna zero change direction? Helm I Con Helm steady course. Uh the Rapooch is turning that way. The yeah, Amgwemma is suicidally continuing. Come right to Con Helm, steady course. Do you know, it's funny actually, the Sverdlov would have been a great candidate for shooting with the, those old World War II Mark VIII torpedoes actually. Uh, we could have, could have taken it out with one of those. I don't know how, I mean, I'm trying to dodge escorts in the, in the process of doing it, but... Theoretically, in a vacuum. Yeah, the Amgram is still coming this way. The Rapucha is... Not sure what it's doing. It's decided to sort of go this way instead. It's weird, isn't it? They, they did decide to flee initially, and then it's like the Soviet Admiral on the Sverdlov or whatever was just like, no. Comrades, you must continue. You must try to make it to the shore. Signed all their death warrants in the process. But maybe it was the maybe maybe in some weird way it is the right choice though because if even if they carried on trying to escape this way we would catch them and we would sink them. So maybe the guy was just like, do you know what? If you try and flee, you're going to die anyway. You might as well try and leg it for the coast, unload, you know, get the troops on the shore if you can. But uh, unfortunately, I think for them, it was a bit of a no-win scenario either way. What would have been bloody sensible is if the Sverdlov had come back a lot sooner than it currently is. Oh, it's coming back. We might might yet get it, folks. Um, what would have been very sensible is for the Sverdlov to stick with the, uh, the troop transport and at least provide them with anti-missile cover. That's probably what a real Sverdlov would have done. But uh, the game AI is, uh, is the game AI at the end of the day, so... <laughs> oh, dearie me. Okay. I think the Amgwema, we're going to target now with a torpedo. Yeah. Oh. Almost had it on the wrong setting. Got to remember to do that. Oh, it even kept the wire. Nice. There it goes. The Amgrem is a bonus, really. It's just it, it's probably just carrying supplies and extra troops to assist the main landing force in the in the LSTs. But uh, we shall sink it regardless. I'll take, I'll take down the bloody Sverdlov too if I get the chance. I'll send the whole group to the bottom. I'll teach them to get big for their boots. You, just, you thought just because old Captain Cook wasn't available at Andoya that you can just waltz on into Trondheim, huh? Well, Ivan, you are incorrect, sir. Weapons active. Con, fire control. There we go. Weapon acquired. 
Could have taken this thing out with an old Mark 8 as well, actually, really. There it goes. Quite the fireball. Fine work, gents. We're not done, though. Come right to We're going for this lad. Three. Helm, I. Do I need to catch up any further? Oh, I do, actually. He's quite far away. All right. Head flank, retract the toad array. Let's go get him. And I shall mark his position on the map. There we go. I mean, I could have done a slightly more accurate job there, but it'll be fine. And I believe his current heading was over there ish, so yeah. Come left to zero. Yeah, he's dropped off now. Helm I con helm. Steady course. At this point, I could pop up and just use the radar mast, or even the periscope, to get a better bead on these guys. Actually, we don't have really much to worry about in the t in the anti-submarine warfare department. No helicopters, I've noticed. No helicopters and no aircraft either. Interestingly enough, I just don't think there are any aircraft. Um, I think the shortcut for that is F4. Yeah, there's no planes. Or oh, hello, hello cop, hello copters. That's not. That's not a word. I, uh, I should engage my brain before opening my mouth sometimes, but yeah, no, no helis and no, no TU-95s or whatever flying about the place, which surprises me. I mean, yeah, this whole scenario here surprises me, really, to be honest with you. The escort was puny. Um, I didn't even have air support. Not that the time complaining, mind you. Good grief. If we were to go try and go after like a Moskva or a uh, what's the name of the really big one? The, the Kirov, yeah. If we were trying to go after after a Kirov I imagine the escort would be ramped up somewhat significantly. They'd probably have helicopters, they'd have a, a TU-95 flying around one or more submarines under the water, up on the surface a bunch of their best frigates yeah, that would be a different proposition entirely, but they uh, they really did a bad job of defending this landing force. Hmm. Well, tell you what, folks, I'll be back when uh, when I've closed in a bit more. Well, folks, there she blows. Uh, unfortunately, her flags are glitching out and making her much easier to see, but I think you could probably just make out the ship-shaped blob on the in the distance there through the fog. And it is quite foggy. So there she is. Uh, detection threshold. There is actually some some readings on the ESM meter here. It's probably coming from the Sverdlov, but we're uh, well under the det detection threshold, so no need to worry about that. And even if it knew where we were, there's not a lot it could do about it, so... Anyway, there's the remaining Rapucha. And, uh, I think. Down scope. We're gonna put it out of its misery. Is that really accurate? My god. Gone fire control. Oh, goody, we lost the wire. Alright, here we go. Sonar. We are cavitating. Speed up a bit. I don't want to speed up too much. I don't want to go to full flank speed because uh, the depressing fact of these stupid tiger fish is that our submarine at full speed will go fast enough to catch it up and bump into it and it make it explode. So. Is 
thing is currently doing 17 knots, so we're slowly closing the distance at 20 anyway. The Sverdlov, in case you're curious, is actually is it come back and is headed this way now. Don't know what he's doing. He's doing 23 knots at the moment. If he keeps doing 23 knots, I might be able to catch him. It'll take a long time, though. But I could theoretically do it. I'm more I'm more worried about the Rapucha, though. He's he's the primary target here. He's got troops on board, and he is headed for the coast, so... Now we wait. This is the trouble with old Tiggy. It is really quite slow. I've actually lost sight of the damn thing now. It's presumably headed towards its target. We can only hope. Should go active around here-ish, I think. Hopefully. Yeah, we're getting into some very shallow water now. As you can see, look, <coughs> you can see all the the seaweed and whatnot down below us there. Come on, little Tiggy. You can catch the bugger. Just about, you should be able to catch the bugger. If only I knew where you were. Any second now, surely. Maybe, maybe not. Don't want to fire another one until I'm absolutely sure it's missed. Starting to oh, there you go. I was just about to say I'm getting the impression it might have missed. No, it was it was it was a good one. Okay, down it goes. Wow, look at the hole in the back of that thing. Holy crap! Kaboom! Right, the only thing remaining is the Sverdlov over there. I would like to try and get him. I really would. Flank speed. Bring her about. And let's see if we can get the big bastard. Make that the crowning achievement of today's massacre. We will lose sight of him pretty soon though. So let me just mark there and mark one for his course ahead. Alright, time compressions. Go. Tell you the truth, though, actually. We're going at maximum speed right now, and we can still hear the bugger. That's just, that's how freaking loud the Sverdlov is. <laughs> it is a noisy boat. Noisy ship. Come left to two, five. All right, uh, this is going to be another waiting game, I'm afraid, All right, guys. So uh, I will join you momentarily once we've caught up. Uh, yes. Behold, though, all of the things I have sunk. I feel quite pleased with myself, I must admit. Well, folks, I've been tailing the Sverdlov for about 10 in real life minutes. And uh, because I think this game doesn't have any more additional levels of time compression, unfortunately. Sometimes I really wish it did. Curiously, though, the Sverdlov seems to be uh, steaming straight for the beach. Uh, I don't know why. It seems to be trying to reenact a kind of uh, Operation Ten Go, but but in the Cold War. I don't know what the captain's plan here is, but he seems to be intending on beaching the Sverdlov <laughs> for some reason. Um, perhaps he figures it's the best way to save himself. But honestly, if he just steamed ahead full, 
I wouldn't be able to catch him anyway. So... <laughs> but he's not showing any signs of slowing down as he approaches the beach here. Um, I am following him, as you can see. We're in some properly shallow water at the moment. I don't want to miss this, though. Uh, this is going to make catching up with him an awful lot easier, I must admit. Time compression on, and... Here we go. Time to hit the beach, everybody. In fact, I think he has, judging by those sound effects. Yes. Uh, well then. So that happened. <laughs> uh, he's just decided uh, we're going to go hop ashore now. Giving up. Maybe he's defecting. Who knows? I don't. I'm. I'm so confused. Maybe Sean Connery's on board and he's decided to switch sides. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, we're going to put him out of his misery, though. Uh, the the, the obvious, obvious reason for this is, is that the AI just apparently is not programmed to take land into account on any, under any circumstances. Um, I imagine the Rapucha would have done exactly the same thing. It would have just gone thunk into the into the beach earlier if I hadn't sunk it. Oh, look at the little uh, lead marker go backwards and forwards. That's quite funny. Well, Captain Cook, I'm sure, can't quite believe what he's seeing. Come right to Khan, less than 50 feet below the keel. Yes, water's getting a bit shallow. We should take care not to end up the same way. But uh, there he is. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Slow ourselves down here. Just a one knot will be fine. Make one sure knot only, please. Up scope. Up scope. <laughs> let's get the let's get the captain's eye view here. Yep, there it is. We are in its detection threshold, so it doesn't know I'm here now, but I don't think there's a lot I can do about it. <laughs> oh dear. Gone fire control, we've lost the wire. Let's see what it does. It might take more than one torpedo to put this bastard out of his misery, admittedly. And I definitely dare not surface because those big guns would tear us to shreds. We would not be a submarine for very long if we uh, actually gave him anything to shoot at. Ah, oh, you see that, that purple ping line on the map? That's actually the ESM contact update. You can sometimes get target information by just raising the ESM mast on occasion. Making turns for one knot. Now, I don't think there's a thing in this game, but I, I want I imagine maybe in the in real life when they the, and they compute the torpedo solution, they may maybe after after over such long distances, perhaps they have to take into account the current. But it might, you know, send the torpedo off course, or maybe that's just not how that works. I've been playing a, 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 another nautical game recently called Sailwind, which is very, very good. It's a quite laid-back, fun game about being the, the captain of your own little um, medieval sailing boat. Boosh. And uh, you navigate old school style with a compass and a map which doesn't have your, your location on it. 
Um, and you, you with the wind, using your sails and whatnot, and it's really quite interesting and cool and stuff. But I didn't notice when I was playing that that this is speaking as someone who knows nothing about sailing boats, obviously, really in real life. I did notice that I was I was getting blown off course quite a bit by the wind and and, and stuff, and obviously the current of the water is in some ways towards the surface anyway, like refle you know reflective of the wind, right? So that's that's the way the waves are going because it's being blown along. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Anyway, tangent aside, uh, that clearly did not sink him. So, uh, fire two, I guess. Gone fire control. We've lost the wire. <laughs> oh, dear. We're lucky, honestly, that like, I, I've, I've, I've seen some folks in the comments saying, oh, they should make the tiger fishers less, less rubbish for gameplay purposes. And I tell you what, man, they're already less rubbish than they were in real life in this game. If you think they're bad in this game, they were so much worse in real life. This right here is effectively a target hulk, is what we're shooting at right here. It's a completely stationary, dead-in-the-water ship that we're firing at. I think I quoted this statistic in one of the... Um, one of the video intros, but after the after the Falklands War, in fact, it was when when they were on their way back from the Falklands War. I think it was HMS Conqueror. Um, partook in some trial uh, firing of of Tigerfish torpedoes, and uh, they did fire like six torpedoes at a target hulk, not unlike this one right here, and uh, none of them successfully detonated. A hulk, um, an, an, an unmoving, well it might have been moving, I don't know actually, I think you can, you know, remote control those things nowadays, but um, <clears throat> effectively a completely defenseless ship, and uh, the Tigerfish still failed to actually do any damage to it, so um, believe me, these things are much more competent in the game than they were in real life, as it is. I wonder if a second one will do it, or maybe we'll need a third. Don't want to waste torpedoes, though, obviously, so... Con, less than 50 feet below the keel. Yeah, that's fine. Con, sonar lost contact. I did the trick. Sorry, sorry for the time compression there. I didn't quite manage to hit the F9 key in time, but it's... Yes, it's going down now. As far down as it will go, anyway, which is not very far. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh boy, some physics about to happen. It might be. It just it doesn't sort of topple over sideways. Or is it just going to sit there like that? Man, what a what a what a what a monument to this war it would be. If it just sat there in the water like that. Put that on the cover of Time magazine. Probably be people on the shore, like, spectating the whole thing in real life. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's actually going to sink any further. Oh boy. Time compression. Physics are happen. Yeah, if I turn on time compression, it goes a bit weird. Whee! Uh, it's, it's, and then it goes down. You know, you can get pills for that, mate. Anyway. <laughs> okay, that's enough silliness for one there. It's supposed to be a very serious let's play, a very serious game about very serious subject matter, I'll have you know. <laughs> oh dear. I'm starting to think maybe that should be the thumbnail right there, but uh, I suppose it would be a bit of a spoiler, wouldn't it? I'll have to make it something else. Beautiful. Anyway, ladies and gents, let's, <laughs> let's get out of here. Let's leave the scene of this uh, hilarious crime and get gone. Yeah, that's our, that's our tally for today, everybody. That's the one last look at the map. Fine work, if I do say so myself. 
Leave combat. There we go. Krivak sunk. Cashin sunk. Rapucha sunk. Two alligators sunk. And Amgrammer sunk. And the mighty Sverdlov as well sunk. Total tonnage 52,000 tons. 520 of ship sent to the bottom. Or indeed the beach, as it turned out. We have 11 tigerfish remaining, four mosses. And that's it. Hopefully we'll get sent back to port at some point. That would be nice. Very pleased to hear that the expected invasion of Trondheim, Norway, has been stopped. Outstanding effort. Await new orders. Yes, it's very publicly stopped, it would seem. Are they going to give us a medal? Yes, they are. The Americans are going to give us the Silver Star. <laughs> Apparently, someone mentioned in the comments in the newer versions of Dot Mod, they actually have British medals in there now, which is quite nice. Uh, unfortunately, I daren't update the mod for fear of breaking the campaign, so uh, I'm going to carry on with the uh, with the American awards for some silly reason. <clears throat> right. Norway defended. An attempted amphibious landing on the shores of Trondheim, Norway, has been defeated by NATO forces while the invaders were still at sea. That's not, strictly speaking, completely accurate, newspaper, but, uh... We'll let you go on that one. <laughs> it was reported the Soviet landing ships suffered heavy losses, as did the naval infantry units they were carrying. Some commentators pointed to the victory as a potential turning point in the war. Others offered a more sober view. Had we not stopped this invasion, it would have been a catastrophe, said one CNN analyst. The rest of Western Europe is still a battleground, and the outcome is far from sure. All right, our new orders. Intelligence reports that an enemy task force is preparing to sail from Murmansk for a patrol in the vicinity of the Norwegian Sea. A NATO carrier battle group is currently providing cover in the region and must be protected. You will therefore intercept and destroy this task force, especially any capital ships. An enemy escort of surface combatants and or attack submarines should be expected. Oh, good. Uh, right, so that whole task force I mentioned, I was that hypothetical one I was talking about earlier, that would have submarines escorting it and, you know, like a big Kirov. Yeah, this this looks like it might be it. Um, primary objective is transit and patrol area blue 44. Locate and sink capital ships. Oh, gosh. With 11 torpedoes. Well, next time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be playing on hard mode. Let's look at our stats. 11 out of 40 we've gotten up to now. Experts at damage control now. Self-noise self reduction, 2 decibels. Very nice. And weird that we're damage control experts, considering we haven't really taken any damage, if you don't count me accidentally destroying my own toad array on occasion of course anyway whatever ladies and gents blue 44 is up there hopefully we can get there in time the surface task force is in this mod for some weird mod related reason they move ridiculously fast on the campaign map so they can be a real pain to try and intercept don't know if we'll manage it but hey we'll give it a go ladies and gents i'm saving the game Thanks for it. Ugh, pause. For, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure as hell did. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, thanks. And I'll catch you in the next one, Toodley.